This is the most important machine in the world that you've probably never heard of. It has only been sold about 140 times and costs $200 million per unit. There is only one single manufacturer of this machine worldwide and every single country in the world depends on it. It requires three Boeing 747s, 40 containers and 20 trucks to ship the machine to other countries. It operates so precisely that it could essentially hit a coin on Earth with its laser from the moon. It's the machine making today's most advanced technologies and life-changing innovations possible. From smartphones to supercomputers, from spaceships to self-driving cars, all of these technologies have one thing in common. They only exist because of the crazy pace of innovation in semiconductors. Join us as we explore how the world's most complex machines are producing the pillars of our advanced technological world, microchips. Why the entire world depends on it and why it potentially can be the subject of World War III. Let's first begin with a brief history of microchips. Transistors are the fundamental building blocks of all chips. They're simply just switches, responsible for all the ones and zeros, by turning electric currents on and off. One way to measure the performance of a chip is by its transistor count. Modern CPUs, like the Intel Core i9, contain billions of transistors in just a couple of square inches. One of the co-founders of Intel, Gordon Moore, actually predicted that the number of transistors on a chip would double roughly every two years. That prediction became known as Moore's Law. In the 50-plus years since his prediction, the number of transistors on a chip increased over a million-fold, doubling roughly every 18 months on average. Companies kept finding new ways to make transistors smaller and smaller, and reducing the size of transistors became sort of an arms race in the semiconductor world a race that they're still in today. Going back as far as the 1980s, almost every chip was built by the company that designed it. While companies like Intel and Samsung did absolutely everything themselves, start to finish, one company chose to focus on just one part of the process and to do it better than everyone else. That company is called TSMC, or Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. And TSMC's focus on manufacturing only ended up being a brilliant move. Over the years, as chips became more and more complex, so did the process of making them. As TSMC became more and more specialized, it continued to reduce manufacturing times and costs. And as TSMC kept innovating and getting more efficient, all their customers continued to benefit, leading to large companies like NVIDIA and AMD moving all their chip manufacturing over to TSMC. This is how TSMC managed to become the world's largest supplier of semiconductors and Asia's most valuable company. Today, TSMC is responsible for about 53% of all microchip manufacturing around the world. When it comes to the most advanced microchips, 10 nanometers and below, they account for 93% of the manufacturing for the ones used in the latest iPhones, supercomputers, and even self-driving cars. A dependency on one single company, which every one of us has experienced during the chip shortage of the pandemic. You may have heard about Intel's failure to produce 7 nanometer chips back in 2020, which caused Apple to start designing their own chips, the M1s, breaking a 15-year partnership with Intel by moving Apple's chip manufacturing also over to TSMC. The important part, however, is to understand these measurements, 10 nanometer, 7 nanometer, all the way down to three nanometers, are talking about the processes that chip manufacturers use to cram more transistors on the same size die. The more transistors on a chip, the higher the computing performance. And this is where the most complex device on the planet comes into play. The process of making such a microchip is incredibly complex and demanding. Another company that found even more success than TSMC by focusing on just one thing is ASML. It stands for Advanced Semiconductor Materials Lithography, and the company based in the Netherlands has a global monopoly on EUV lithography systems. 
This basically means without ASML, none of the major chip manufacturers such as TSMC or Samsung would have succeeded today. Lithography is the main process for making microchips. EUV stands for extreme ultraviolet. So how are those microchips produced? And why is it such a complex process? The basis of each chip is a so-called wafer, which is usually made of silicon and cut into very thin slices. This wafer is then polished and coated with photosensitive photoresist. A mask with predetermined patterns called reticle is used for the light exposure process. Here, a light which hits the wafer burns the patterns of the reticle into the photoresist. It changes its chemistry and forms a three-dimensional structure, which later determine the properties of the microchip. This step called photolithography is crucial because the more patterns and thus transistors that fit on a plate, the more efficient and faster the chip will be. The entire microchip manufacturing process actually involves the wavelength of light to print the microchip patterns. Light can also be represented as a wave, and the wavelength determines the distance between two wave peaks. For example, red light has a long wavelength, as shown in this spectrum, while light from a very short wavelength is violet or ultraviolet light. Therefore, the wavelength determines how intricate the structures on the microchips can be. This is comparable to the thickness of lines when drawing with a pencil. The shorter the wavelengths of light, the more advanced the microchip. A wavelength of around 193 nanometers, which is also called deep ultraviolet light, has been used up until now that our eyes cannot even perceive. However, extreme ultraviolet light is the wavelength needed to print next-gen microchips matching the performance of Moore's Law. To artificially produce this EUV light, a machine about the size of a bus is used. This process starts with one of the most powerful laser systems in the world, which combines the energy of about 40 million laser pointers. The energy of the laser must now be converted into extreme ultraviolet light with a right wavelength of 13.5 nanometers. This is where tin comes into play, or rather, the vaporization of the tin droplets. These droplets with a diameter of about 25 micrometers are shot through a nozzle with a speed of 70 meters per second. The droplets are then hit twice with laser pulses, first with a weak intensity to flatten the droplet like a pancake, and then with an extremely high intensity to vaporize the droplet and create plasma. Through this plasma generation, energy is released in the form of light, which is the required EUV light. To generate enough EUV light, the process has to be repeated about 50,000 times per second. The light is bundled through a parabolic mirror. Other mirrors then reflect the focused light to the correct position to print the microchip structures into the wafer. It is critical that these mirror reflectors are extremely smooth, since even the slight roughness of just one nanometer could destroy the end results and waste the entire batch. The aim of these laser beams has to be super precise. The needed precision is comparable to a laser hitting a coin on Earth from the moon. One wafer can fit up to 100 individual chips, and up to 100 wafers can be processed per hour. In order for this microchip to perform its computational calculations, additional materials such as aluminum, tungsten, copper, or silicon compounds must be applied. It can take up to three months to process just one wafer. These machines operate in super clean rooms that are 10,000 times cleaner than the air outside because one single speck of dust on the wafer can ruin the whole batch. You can see that printing microchips is incredibly complex. That's why the machine is also referred to as one of the most complex devices ever created. Only about 140 of these machines have been sold in the past 10 years, and one machine costs a whopping $200 million. That's why only five large chip manufacturers have been able to afford this technology. The three largest, TSMC, Samsung, and Intel, accounted for almost 84% of ASML's business in 2021. Overall, a machine consists of seven modules and up to 100,000 parts. ASML has six production sites around the world, and when they ship to other countries, it takes three Boeing 747s, 40 cargo containers, and 20 trucks. So you can really say that all countries in the world are dependent on this Dutch technology, and it will remain so for the time being, 
because ASML is the only company that began developing these EUV lithographs back in the 1990s. This has given them a significant advantage, giving the company an estimated value of $250 billion, making it more valuable than Intel. Experts estimate it'll take about a decade for another company to catch up with this technology, not only because of its complexity, but also because of the exclusivity that the company maintains with its over 800 suppliers. Many of these suppliers have been acquired directly to prevent anyone else from obtaining this knowledge. But this monopoly on such an important technology also harbors potential for conflict, especially between the rivals USA and China, which already scared the world because of rising tensions in Taiwan. In August 2022, President Biden signed the so-called CHIPS Act, a $280 billion investment in the chip industry with the goal of breaking China's rising dominance. But China also continues with large investments. Since Xi Jinping's agenda, Made in China 2025, aims to make China lead the way in areas like artificial intelligence to become a high-tech superpower, the United States has reason to worry. But both USA and China, as well as all nations around the world, are dependent on ASML's EUV lithography machines. In 2019, the Trump administration successfully forced the Dutch government with sanctions against China not to sell EUV lithography systems, and these are considered to be extended further. Australian scientists, however, have reported a breakthrough. A computer made of human brain cells has learned faster than conventional AI. Is this the future of artificial intelligence? Watch the displayed video to learn more.